Hi guys and welcome back. This is course 3 of our adaptation course. Where we will be talking about the organizational aspects of studying at CU. But once again, welcome, welcome to, to Charles, Charles University. University. Alright, let's start easy with the length of an academic year. The Charles University academic year is based on two semesters, winter and summer. Both semesters are followed by examination periods. The number of teaching weeks and the length of the examination period are determined by the dean of each faculty, so be sure to check the calendar on your faculty's website. We generally start our winter semester around the 1st of October and our summer semester in the middle of February. Life can be unexpected at times, so if you find yourself unable to finish exams before the holidays in July and August, there's still a chance to complete them in September since it's still part of the summer semester. That might sound long, but it gives you a chance to spread out some exams in case you find yourself needing it. Speaking of exams and testing, how will you be evaluated during your studies? Charles University uses the ECT system, European Credit Transfer System. Unless you're here for doctoral studies, then it's a bit different. But basically, credits are the coin for work and time. To complete a full academic year, you'll need to obtain 60 credits. Every subject is worth a certain number of credits according to the workload or number of hours they require. Meaning that, for example, 25 hours of classes equals one European credit. Now, what do you have to do to get the credits and pass the subject? Well, this will also depend on your faculty and will differ from subject to subject. Generally speaking, there are two types of subjects. The ones where no exam is needed, and in those it's just a matter of pass or fail. So either you pass and get the credit, or you don't and don't get the credit. But if there's no exam, what do we need to pass? Well, that will also depend on the subject. In some, to pass, you might only have to attend the seminars and be there. And in others, you might have to develop some project or write an essay or a test. It varies. The take-home message for this is that there's no exam, so no grade. And then there's the other ones, the subjects that are graded. And these depend on an exam. Now, the exam can be anything, from a written exam, oral, or even both. Exams are then graded from 1 to 3, or A to C, where A is excellent, 1, Viborne in Czech, B or 2 is very good, Velmi Dobje, and C or 3 is good, Dobje. And then there's obviously the evil F for fail, Neve Hoviel. This is the classic grading system here at Charles University, but in some faculties it might change a bit. Alright, but before you get all excited about going around and collecting credits, there's a few rules you need to know. It is true that we have 17 faculties, and it is true that they are all very independent, but certain rules apply to all of them, and therefore to you as well. Let's start with the code of study and examination. A few general rules about your rights and duties. First things first, some frequently asked questions. When are you officially a student? As we said before, it's the day you enroll. In justified cases based on faculty decision, you can do this by filling an online form. Next. How long are you going to study for? Well, the standard period of study depends on the type of your study. But Charles University has made it easier for you. In case during your studies you feel like you might need a break or have an obligation to attend to, a great thing about Charles University is that you can interrupt your studies to do what you have to do and get right back into it. The longest total period of interruption of study is counted into the maximum period of study. So my tip for you would be interrupt with caution because you do temporarily lose your student status. At some faculties, unless you have a serious reason, you won't be able to interrupt your studies before you complete your first year or two semesters of studies. On the other hand, you should note that serious health problems or maternity and paternal leave don't count towards that total period of interruption of study. Remember how I said this period of interruption is counted into the maximum period of study? Well. The maximum period of study is the number of years a student has to complete their studies, and it differs based on your program. And I'm going to summarize it for you. In the bachelor's program, it's six years. This is different than the long cycle master's program, which is a combination of the bachelor's and a follow-up master's, for example, medicine. Here, the maximum period of study is 10 years. In a master's program, which is a continuation of the bachelor's program, also called the post-bachelor program, it is five years, and in a doctoral program, it's eight. You're probably wondering, so when does the countdown start? And it starts on the first day of the academic year if you've already enrolled. But if you haven't and you enroll into your studies after the first day of the academic year, the maximum period of study counts from the date of enrollment. 
Just be aware that after the maximum period of study expires, you'll not be able to take examinations, state final examinations, or fulfill other study requirements, and your studies will therefore be terminated. But let's imagine full-time is just a lot of time for you, and you'd rather learn a bit more independently, with more flexibility in relation to time and schedules. In this case, and if it's available at your faculty, you can apply to change the form of study. And as long as you want to stay within the same study program, the dean of the faculty may then allow you to do so. Furthermore, sometimes you can even get an individual study plan or curriculum, meaning that you can agree with your faculty that instead of completing a certain subject within its limit, you'll just take a little longer. For more information about your rights and duties, consult the Code of Study and Examination or speak directly to the Student Administration Office at your faculty. On your faculty webpage, you can find information about the Code of Conduct. It's established for members of our community to know what is expected of them. At Charles University, we have standard guidelines to deal with situations where someone commits what's considered an academic infraction, like cheating on a test or plagiarism. In case of a breach to this code, each faculty has its own disciplinary committee composed of students and teachers who are responsible for handling disciplinary matters. Because you will now be part of the Charles University community, I want you to be aware that we have another specific code called the Code of Ethics. It's basically some rules that help protect you, your work, and ultimately the Charles University community you're now a part of. These codes expect members of our community to be honest when handling data and when examining materials for research and to do so with care. It's also important that you accurately report your findings and use standard protection protocols, and most importantly, be curious. Another important aspect defining the code addresses research funding. If there's a field you're interested in researching, the code states that the funds you receive for research should be used sensibly and effectively. Charles University needs all of us to comply with the principles of intellectual property protection, both when carrying out our work and when dealing with the works of others, because one should always give credit where credit is due. Are you still there? Still breathing? Then hang on tight because we're reaching the end. And to finish on a positive note, we've left the best for the end. The rules about scholarships and bursary, monetary awards. So, in what circumstances could you possibly get paid for something good? Charles University awards students that stand out for several reasons. Nothing goes unnoticed here. Be it for outstanding academic results, research, development or innovation, anything artistic or creative contributing to greater knowledge. You can also expect an early Christmas gift if you decide to help with teaching or research activities, work in laboratories, help with development of information technologies, international cooperation, excellent sports achievements, representation of the university, or laudable citizen acts. But these are not the only situation when Charles University opens its wallet. In case you're going through some difficult times and experiencing financial problems, you can apply for support as well. Also, research is highly valued at Charles University, and therefore, all our doctoral students are awarded with a monthly paid scholarship during the whole standard length of their studies. For more information on all this and much more, don't forget to visit Charles University website. All right, guys, that was all from our side. Do you have any questions? Oh, wait, we can't hear them. Yeah, but it's fine, just, just play along. Okay, so no questions? Well then, if there are no questions, I guess it's time for us to say goodbye. Stay safe and stay happy. And see you in our next video.